Hey, this is Navarre, the Big Bowler, and you tuned in to Rolling Out. All right, Rashad Milligan here for Rolling Out once again, and we have a very special guest. You guys already know. You guys already know. Come on, man. Come on, man. That everybody is saying, oh, you know, maybe he was right. Maybe he wasn't just saying things. Okay, 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 okay. We finally have. Now, I told you souls are sold out right now, man. We got the big ball. Exactly. Ball. Ball. Exactly. How are you doing, sir? Hey, man, I'm doing wonderful. You know how I get down with the get down. I'm having a great time. It sounds good. Sounds good. So, you know, like, like I said, speaking of the I told you so release, um, how good did it feel for you to say, to tell the public, to tell the world, I told you so? I didn't feel the same to me every day. I mean, it ain't going to change nothing. But I tell you what, I told you so changed that my money in my pockets. <laughs> that shoe is a wonderful shoe, man. Oh, my God. I didn't know yeah. that many folks were behind a big baller like that, man. They love them shoes. My, my son said that though. He said, Dad, I'm gonna create something, man. You're gonna, you're gonna trip off of it. When he showed me the things and said, I told you so, I'm like, wow, he said, that's the style. People like stuff like that though. I said, wow, I didn't know that. That, that thing went off like some hotcakes. I said, God damn. Okay, but it's, it's good though. But I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what I was about to say. I guess, you know, to, to have it sell out uh, so quickly, um, like, like you said, Jello was kind of, you know, engineer behind it. Of, simplicity right. and everything with the design um i guess just you know uh just moving on if you will uh why are you with, with your approach why are you such kind of unapologetic apologetically like a, a black father in the face of basketball or the nba what do i need to apologize for hey, hey, it's like this if i was doing something wrong or something bad then i might have to apologize as long as I ain't hurt nobody and doing what I like to do, I'm fine. I'm not going to be apologetic to nothing that I say or feel. And, and why is that important for, you know, just black well, players? For, for, for me, I want people to believe in themselves, but, uh, but also understand uh, what, why you got to be apologetic because you feel a certain way. Everybody ain't got to feel the same. You know, you might like rainy days and I might like sunny days. And I'll be like, man, I don't like, I don't like him because he like rainy days. He must be a sad person. That don't mean you have to apologize for, for being raining. <laughs> you say, right. man, I like being inside in the rain, man. I like to cozy up, I like to study, I like to do whatever I want to do. When it's raining, it feels good to me. You know, right. but, and, but but everybody got different opinions about things, man. And I don't think nobody should have to apologize unless, unless, unless they hurt somebody. If you hurt somebody, then that's a different story. But other than that, believing in yourself and having uh, confidence in what you're doing or, or how you feel about a certain product or whatever you're doing it, it shouldn't be no apologies needed and why is it so important for you know i guess players to, to carry that mentality with them whether they're on the court or or you know just handling business off well, I, I try to enlighten them guys to understand that hey everybody got to come get the guys who's doing all the running and jumping on the court but them the ones who ain't making the money if they're not there the other folks wouldn't be making no money so they got to understand they value which a lot of them don't because because uh, most of the talent, the talent comes from the hood. So when you you, you don't go to Beverly Hills or Thousand Oaks and say, man, I'm trying to find me a hell of a player over there. No, you got to go to the hood. The people ain't got much, but a lot of talent. So you give them a little bit of something and they'd be like, oh, we made it. We good. But you could be so much more. But now people starting to open their eyes and say, wow, that is true. <laughs> See, they used to tell them, this is what they had the guys food with. They said, hey, you got to win seven championships, got to get eight all-star games, and I might give you a signature mm -hmm. shoe. But shoot, I show them how easy it is. Do you guys make enough money to make your own damn shoe, but you don't understand it. So I give my son, Lonzo, the first one ever to come in the, come in the uh, NBA with his own signature shoe. Jello ain't even in the league, got a signature shoe. Melo, the youngest ever to come in the game with a signature shoe. Now they're talking about, oh, Melo has his first uh, Puma shoe. No, that's his second. Yeah, but when he's 16, it ain't a big deal. You know, so, so but, but they're going to really sock it to him with this Puma thing because they're going to enlighten everything. He ain't even a top athlete on Puma. He might think he is, but he's not. Puma is for soccer. But until he understands that, then, hey, you're going to get a little bit. You ain't going to get a lot because a lot of people was in front of my son. 
that ain't got no money for this shoe. I'm talking about your Michael Jordans, your Kobe Bryant's, all them, all them suckers, that, man, they made so much money off them. On to the next one. On to the next one. And that's what they got to understand. Like, like I said, in order to be a, a, a billionaire, that's what my boys is understanding. You got to own something. And don't think you're going to be the newest guy in the, in the, in the league with a, with a signature shoe and think you're going to make a lot of money off of that shoe. You're not. So until you're doing your own thing, that's when you're going to make a lot. Do you, do you think that's something that, that Lonzo kind of learned early on in his career? Kinda, hey, Lonzo's you know? learning it, all of them. They've seen it now. Because it's like, wow. <laughs> My dad saw this stuff way ahead of time, of course, son. That's why I ain't changed yet. And, and what, what, what did you respond to? Man, we think we can get the ball boys. If we get all the ball boys, the only way Puma was going to work, the only way where, it's gonna, where they're going to make a lot of money off that Puma is still a Puma shoe. I don't see too many people running in those stores talking about, let me get them Pumas. <laughs> I don't care who on there. The only way it was going to work was if you got all three of my sons. Other than that, it wasn't going. It's not going. It's not going to do too much. It's going to be all right, but it ain't going. Come on, nah. What was your response to, uh, to to Melo when that? I guess that happened. Was I, I told you so? What was it? <laughs> oh, the response ain't, ain't no response. You know, just like they was like the the narrative is trying to be. Oh, before I put a shoe out, when Melo put a shoe out, hold on. I ain't got no time limit on when I got to put a shoe out. I don't have to check with them to say, oh, is Melo having a release? What kind of Puma release is that? And you, you get a Puma release, but you can't buy the shoe yet. What kind of release is that? And you can go buy mine. That's how I release it. You can go buy it right now. And to show you what Jello thing is, that, that shoe is what we think of it is the only ones that, that's on that level of a lifestyle shoe. That can go to $700, $800, $900. People try to compare me with Nike and Puma. No, I'm not them. I'm a luxury brand, a premium. Let them battle down here. I'm up here. So, so it shows what you think of my son. $125. Okay. $125. That's good. Put him over there with the $125. Over here, your shoe, your baby shoe that I made you was fun. <laughs> Just to let you know how I think about you, son. That's how they think about you. That's how I think about you. But you'll learn. I wanted to ask you about that because, you know, when I was doing the research or whatever, you know, preparing for the interview, I saw on the website that, you know, uh, the new ZOT uh, twos and the new G3s, they're under $200, like the athletic shoes, the basketball right. shoes. Right. But what, what, what went boys into that? did. That's what they did. All and, that, but but why don't you think that's been um, put out as much as, you know, when, when you put out I Told You Souls for 600 plus, you know, it's a headline. When, when you put out the first ZO2s a couple of years ago, well, it was 500, that was a headline. Why, why right. isn't this a headline with the new prices? The new prices is ain't nobody talking about them too. That's what the boys thought. I, I let them try to do their thing. They way they said, "Dad, I, I think I could sell to more people. Uh, you know, more people be affordable." Hey, all right, y'all want to do that? That's fine. I that's what you. they allowed their shoe to go down. Like I said, if I got a shoe, I'm putting it sky high. Why? Because that's what I feel it's worth. If you gonna pay eight, nine hundred dollars for some Gucci and Prada, who's to say my goddamn shoe ain't like that? So don't don't tell me, uh, you know, that I'm supposed to put the regular price to go down because I'm black. No, just like y'all going out there and buying all the Alexanders and all this other shoes that cost six and seven hundred dollars. Don't wait till the only black man to sell his at that much. Now you're like, oh no, they shouldn't be that high. Why? <laughs> I'm the same as, as them. I, they think their stuff is fly. I think my stuff is fly. So, so it's all on when you when you own something, you can do what you want. Just like folks like kind of say in there, oh, I'm gonna wait till they get in Ross and this. And then, okay, they ain't gonna never get there because I'm not gonna sell them to them. And so they say, oh, we can't push these, so now we got to drop them down to ninety dollars. No, I leave my price where it's at, just like everybody leave their price where it's at. So don't don't get on me with that. Like, oh, you need to get these. You need to get. No, that's how I feel about my brand. What, what do you think? What, what do you think that mentality came from in, in black consumerism, where you know, where we're where, okay where with it came high from, prices? It just came. It came from me. I mean, open your eyes and look. That's all you got to do. But people are scared because they get that. They, they've been in this line for so long that when somebody like me be like, "Hey, what are you talking about?" But you know, and then our our people be trying to be like, "Ah," oh, because you brainwashed already, so you can't support that. And be like, oh, he got a light like, a shoe too. That shoe got to say Louis Vuitton or Gucci. Then you're like, oh, it's cool. <laughs> 1200 I got these. Look. 
you know, but I'm the only one in the game like this, man. I don't know too many, you know, black folks is up in the game like this. Right. And it's, it's, it's knowing your self-worth, knowing your self-worth and it's all good. Like I said, some people won't be cool with it. Some people are not gonna be cool with it, but I, I'm good. You know, as long as I believe in it like that and my family is like that, we, we all good. What, what are three business tips that you'll give to small uh, black business owners? Three tips, I would say, you know, believe in your product. Okay, that's that's one thing. Uh, second thing is, I would say before anything, you got to have a passion for it. So if, if, if you want to be a businessman, businessman, you usually got to, you either got to perform something or you, or you have to sell a product. So two things is if you have pride in performing in something, hey, that's how you're going to make your money, you know? But if you got a product, you got to believe in it and you got to have a following to see why you're going to sell that. What's the purpose of it? Who's going to follow it? Who's going to be like, oh, I got to get that. If you don't have that lane, it's just like any, any, any kind of product. What happens is the product can be good as hell, but you have to find somebody who's going to say, hey, this is what I wear. This is what I do. If you don't find those guys, that's where the endorsement deals comes in. Because everybody got a product, but then they say, ooh, what is everybody looking at? Are they looking at the guy who goes to the library and read every night? Or are they looking at the guy who can catch touchdowns and entertain them, whether it be comedy and a movie or something? So, so I got to get that guy the product because he got more eyes on him. Ain't no eyes on no CEO. There's only one eyes on the CEO, and that's me because I'm on the bottom floor. <laughs> everybody else got a suit and tie on. They send 12 people. 400 people for shares and all that. I don't have all that. I'm the boss. I do and say what I want. That's what scares them. So it's like, whoa, we see LeVar down here with the people up here with that man. I just rolled, but I'm the only CEO that's on the ground level. And what, why do you think people want to portray uh, big black athletes and, and, you know, kind of particular, just as unintelligent beings in general? Well, that's, that's normal. That's how we've been, you know, you know brought up. You, uh, I'll give you a little scenario. Who runs the world? The, the, the strong override the weak. So if I'm stronger than you, I'm bully you. But how do they get over the, the, the strong? How come, how come the biggest, strongest guy ain't the running the world? That dude, you got to outsmart him. And that's where that wisdom comes in to overpower the strong. So that's why, you know, most of us are built big and strong. But the other guy at the top, like I'm in the back room, I got a pencil and a pen, I can write whatever. <laughs> and see, that's, that's who runs the world. It don't be no big guy, be a little guy. Look, he got this. So what you don't want is a big guy like me with this. Dangerous. <laughs> I, I was just about that. So where did that come from for you to be like kind of, if you would, that exception of, you know, like uh, not, not well, only well, am I the big strong guy, but I have from, if, Well, you, you got to have that. But well, what I'm saying is uh, a lot of people, they, they stuck in a, in a line and, and what it is is just security. Most people are going to work for, for a mortgage and a, and a, and a car note. And, and that's, that's it. We go through life. Boom, boom, boom. As long as I got a roof over my head. Got a nice little house. People say, "Ooh, it's nice." They're paying the mortgage, and everybody, "Oh, you got a nice car too." Hey, I like that. You know, if you if you if you if you're going out there, they're not going to jump out of that line. But if you see things, you're like, "Wow!" I can see my mom working nine to five. My dad working nine to five. It don't take me where I said I won't work no nine to five. I see what they're doing. They're still good, but I, I don't. Uh, I think I'm gonna do a little better. I'm gonna jump outside that line. So now, instead of buying real estate and all this, I'm gonna put all this time into my boys, knowing they're gonna make it to the league. But they're gonna be comfortable. But they're gonna start the ball, ball name off where it's like, whoa, that, that ball name is strong. That's because I make it strong. Well, my boys doing what they do, the time that I invested in them, everybody act like they just popped out and be like, oh, the boys are living off his boys. Well, you know what they like to say all the time when my boys is so amazing on that court. Oh, you can't teach that where they got to learn it from somebody. <laughs> All my boys play the same way in the games. There's, there's people watching that. Oh, I love watching Lonzo play. Oh, I love watching uh, the, I mean, LaMelo play. Yeah, of course. Cause those, are my, those are my boys. I taught them how to entertain like that. Get rid of that ball and they play the same style and they both at the top. Like I said, if you really want to see something, 
Wait till all the other three will get on the same team. Now the game will be so fast, it would be like, even in my 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 my, my JBA league, if, if people was like, it ain't no, uh, I'm showing people the game way ahead of time. Them games was 150, 170. People was like, oh shoot, that's what the game is too. Now when people run, get 120, oh, <laughs> oh, oh my God. One, two. Man, I'm gonna tell you this. Putting my boys on the same squad with 12 minutes, I, I guarantee. And that's how I used to say it. And then Charles take my guarantee to that day. Now, oh, guarantee. I tell him that a long time ago. You can go back when I was talking about the boys saying they ain't gonna lose a game in high school. That's how long the guarantee was. And I'm like, this boy done used my style on TNT. Now he, I guarantee he ain't never guaranteed nothing in his life. Now all of a sudden he said, oh, shoot, now I got to use that. Yeah, I know you do. But I'm just saying, the boys are together, 12 minutes, it's not going to be hard for my boys to score 40 and 50 points a quarter. Because, see, this is what they say. And this is what I taught. You, LeVar, you can't fast break every play. Why not? Take the ball out fast. Get somebody, get one person to take the ball out. Whoever is the slowest on your team, take the ball out. Everybody <laughs> else, run full speed. And hey, now we're going to run. They're going to score 40 and 50. You got to score 160 to beat my boys all together. And I don't think you can go 160 a night because I'll take the big man right off the game. Luke, what's, what's that boy name? Uh, Joker. Anybody that's big oh, yeah. and beat, yeah. they will not play in the game. If I got my big <laughs> boys in there, they be sitting down talking about, man, I can't get down that other end that fast. They throwing the ball too fast. But that's how my boys are. They play. I, I teach you. My boys are the only ones who had to go to the NBA and slow down. Mm. So, that so, so, you, if, so if you had a lineup with, with your three boys and the MVP, you saying we're not playing the MVP because he can't play our he style. Can't, and now we will run the, we will run the, we will run the breaks off everybody. And all the people who are not conditioned, they will be like, oh, I'm not playing this game. I didn't get to the NBA to do this. I'm tired. I know you are, because that ball flying. See, Mello and Mello and Jello and Zoe, all of them are by themselves, they're very good. But I never raised them to be by themselves. I trained them to play together. And last time they was together, they went undefeated. So now they're together as grown men. That ball be so fast. As soon as they take it out, they be throwing it to the other end first. People will be like, man, what is this? Never been seen before. But they do it in the, they do it in the NBA now. You have to change the game. Easy. Right now they just running by they said they don't have people they can throw that long pass to over and over. They can't do that. You you know I'm in Atlanta. So last yeah. year I asked Onyeka if, if he thought that was the greatest, you know, public high school basketball team of all time. So right. you know, uh I guess just just for you, like when when you had that opportunity uh this past summer where Alonzo was, was a free agent, Jello was on the summer league team in Charlotte, and you know, Lamelo was already in Charlotte. Like, what, what were there any conversations with the family about getting Lonzo about Lonzo signing with uh Charlotte, too? Well, the, the conversation was like, yo, let's let's play together, let's play together. But see, people on the other side, they got to make their money too, so they don't see it like me. So they're like, hey, let me get him the highest contract ever, I can get him, so I can get me a little money. I, I understand how these people think, so you're gonna be in people's ear. Other guys would be like, oh, but see, if Lonzo would have went to Charlotte, I think how big that would have been. Yeah. But it was was him going to Charlotte better for his team around him? I don't think so. It's better to be in a big city market. But it's okay to do their thing. But in the, at the end, my boys are going to be on the same team on the fact that they can make a decision when their contracts is up. Forget about the money. Do we want to all play together? And that's going to be the thing. That's the story. See, they could have made so much money on the off court, but you know, guys that's this in a camp and, and oh, it's taught where the agent is supposed to, he got to get him a little something. So you know, like, I got to look through, but I got to do the best. So then, they, then they tell him, oh, this is the best for you. Cause you're not looking at it the way I'm looking at it. Cause if you get mellow and jello, I mean, uh, you get mellow and zone. Yeah. Jello's a shoe in, we wouldn't be going through all this. Yeah. On the fact we got two guys saying, let's go now. We got to finish the deal. Let's get three of them and show me that somebody can beat them three. Ain't gonna happen. Because they will to win is very strong. That's what folks don't understand right now what's going on. Lonzo right now is dealing with Chicago, which is 
he making sure he's he making a cake and all the ingredients got to be in there. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. Folks, oh, I need to see Lonzo score 20, 30 points and have 15 assists. Would you rather him have all them damn shooting the ball 100 times and you already got three 20-point scores on your team, so now you're going to add and add some more shots, and guess what? It don't mix. Yeah. But people like to say, oh, Lonzo better than Melo. Why? Because he ain't scoring like that? Melo's a better scorer. No, they <laughs> all the same. Well, would you rather have Melo scoring? He scored 30 the other night. Still lost. Lonzo ain't got to do him but shoot the first half to let people say, hey, you better guard me. Now, the second half, the game opened up because they worried about Lonzo was making an open shot. Now, your one-on-one -on -one players can play one-on-one. -on -one. Zach and, and DeMar, no, I just know who to get the ball to, and you guys go ahead and finish the game. Lonzo figures out combinations to win. That's why his record is 6-1. and one. Melo going to highlight, he's going to do his thing, but he got an okay team. But they ain't like Lonzo's team. So guess what? Melo going to score his ass off. <laughs> but he's not going to win more than Zoe. But he's going to score more, and people are going to be like, oh, I told you he's better than Zoe. Wrong. Zoe going to get the victories. I'm telling you, he's going to get the wins. And I told him this. Since he was a baby, I said, "Cause son, it don't matter nothing about them goddamn stats you get. If you're a point guard, you only measure by victories. Why do you think Magic Johnson is the best point guard in the game? It ain't like he got the best handle. He ain't got the best shot. He big, but them championships make him the best point guard ever. Cause look how many championships he got playing that style of throwing the ball. Ain't no other guards doing like that. You might get one or two, but whoever got the most championships gonna be that one. Look at Jordan. You get six in a row." Yeah. Everybody like three and three. Oh, he the best player ever. Till somebody do that. How do you feel now with all these new leagues being kind of brought up? The G League doing uh, its own thing where, where players come straight out of high school years after the JBA was established. How, how do you feel seeing this uh, kind of the see, effect of you? Here's the thing. I don't change my view on nothing. I got a good life. So I don't need to be like, hey, I made him do that. Everybody <laughs> know who made him do that. I ain't got to say nothing. You ain't got to give me no flowers, no roses. You ain't got to give me a goddamn thing. But if you don't want to get a block ball or something, God damn it, go get me some donuts and milk and we good. But you ain't got to give me no flowers because I ain't trying to get no flowers, but I already know what I did. And I'm not trying to be like, I told him I did this first. That's why, man, you open your eyes, you can see. All them changes has been made. Why? Because one brother came in here and been a little disruptive. Holler at you, boy. Uh I wanted to ask you about mentorship and, you know, kind of training and, and helping other players in, in the South California area, you know, guys like uh, Anya, who was also on the league and stuff like that, a guy like Eli, um, just, you know, where, where did that passion come from for, for you to, you know, want to mentor and help the other kids in the area as well? Well, I always did. I've been a, a trainer and just, just all through life helping out folks, you know, even the some neighborhood kids when I was young and we had a big family and they didn't have much. Come on down here and hang with us. I won't practice playing catch and, and, and doing this and having fun with us. So it's always been like that. Like I tell them before, man, them kids, if they good to my sons, I'll help them out. You know, that's just how I roll. And I always had somebody up in the house that didn't have as much. And, you know, from your Eli's, EJ's, Omika, all of them. But you don't, you don't, you don't get drafted if you don't get a custom my style. That running the floor and blocking shots, that's how you think Onika got drafted. Eli, how do you think he got into college? Without me, he's still been in Upland. So, but I don't need to do these things. I always have, you know, Milan, Lonzo's friends, all those guys know they didn't have much. Hey, I got you. Come on over here. You know, and that's all I've always been like that, me and my wife. So, so we we good. The blessings is always there. And like the boys is always helping out folks too. So it's a good thing. Cause like I tell my boys, after you done bought all the houses and all the cars you want, uh, you got all this money, what are you gonna do? You better have a passion to do something. And at the end of the day, you got to help somebody do something. I don't care if it's one person or 10,000. All these people like to talk. Oh, he did the JBA. He's not doing it again. How about you do it this time and pay for it? <laughs> you know, but now they ain't thinking like that. So the fact that I did it for as long as I did it or whatever, I'm always helping somebody. I don't hear these other guys that, that like, like your Stephen Age or Charles, but all these guys, I don't see them having no program where they got interns. Were they paying these kids, helping them become broadcasters or nothing? They're not doing that. So show me that you're helping somebody, one person, anybody. They're not doing that. But they want to talk about stuff like, they, oh, yeah, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. 
You got all this money, and who who have you helped? You haven't helped anybody do anything. So so I don't want to hear that. You know, so they can speak their little mind and oh, he says yeah, yeah. But I help folks. You ain't helped nobody do nothing. What well, what are some nurturing tips that that you would give at, as a black father and stuff to to you know other parents? Other parents, I'm just gonna say, if you had them kids, take care of them and believe in them. That's all. A lot of them sometimes, man. Uh, me and my wife was you know fortunate enough to to say, hey, I, I want these kids. We're gonna have these kids, and this is how we're gonna do it. Some of these people are not as fortunate. You want to lay down and, 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 and do your thing, but then the kid comes up, you're like, oh, shoot, wait, wait a minute. Uh, it's here, so I guess I, I, I guess I got to do this. As opposed to say, let's plan this. Let's plan this. How are we going to do it? When you believe in, it, believe in them kids, man, and you want them here and be like, you know what, something positive is out of this on the fact that you're bringing a life into this world. Just take care of it, man. Everybody ain't got to be... God dang, sports rappers and, and movie stars, just find out a passion that they have that you kind of lead them in the right way. And uh, I think it's in the beginning where people get stuck on this. Oh, I'm going to let them find out what they want to do. First of all, they don't know what they want to do. So how about you guide them some way? Okay, we're going to go into school and do a lot of studying. Okay, we're going to go outside and play a little catch. Okay, we're going to go do some swimming. Pick which, which one you think you kind of feel good doing all the time. Now, if I, you frown every time we go swimming. Basically, you don't want to swim. But if you get all amped up, we go to the library. We are going on a field trip in the museum. Oh, man, hey. How about we get on this computer? Oh, that's my favorite. Now you're in the computer. Instead of going outside, you're on the computer creating stuff. And, and that's how you find out, so, oh, you're going to do something positive. What you ain't going to do is lay down here, eat chips all day, and then watch TV. Where you don't have no yeah uh, no 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 vision to do nothing. You just want to relax and kick it all the time, you know. And that's where people get well. I'm gonna fi- I'm gonna let them figure it out. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's like having the directions and keeping them in your pocket. Talking about find your way. <laughs> you are gonna find it. Yeah, okay. But what if I gave directions? Go down the street. Go straight. Make a right. And you right there instead of you driving all backwards and doing all this stuff trying to figure it out. If you can help them, help them in a positive way. Now, last few questions, um, you know, recently in an interview with Taylor Rooks, Lou Williams was talking about how some guys had no business being in the NBA. They're only uh-huh. in there for relationships with uh, coaches and agents. So for you to see um, the, the way that Jello performed in the summer league and to still have to take this kind of alternate route to get to the roster, how frustrating, uh, how frustrating is that for you? Well, it's not frustrating at all because all my sons are cut from the same cloth. So they're going to take different routes to get there, but they all going to get there. So it is what it is. But that's how the world is ran. It's, they try to they try to bag up and be like, ah, if it wasn't for Melo and it wasn't for Lazo, guess what? Jello, he's getting too many opportunities. He shouldn't be there. Well, create your own opportunity and see how it goes. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, if you if you know, if they got a line and it stretch around the block and your homeboy get there early, I, I bet you ain't saying I'm trying to be right and go to the back of the line. I bet you're going to ease up in the front. <laughs> What's up, dude? Good. Thanks for holding the spot. How do you think all them other people got where they at? They're going to go with family first. I know I am. You're going to go with family first. So so what I'm saying is a lot of these people in high positions and stuff, why, why is Jeannie Buss the only lady who owns one of the most prestigious clubs in the game, the Lakers? How? Tell me she got a hell of a resume. No, how about my daddy on this thing? I got sons too, but you know what? Come on over here. But you don't write about that. The only reason she got it is because of her dad. They ain't gonna say that. But let my boys do some stuff. Oh, the only reason she got the dad, I'm telling you. Okay, come on. A lot of these folks get in there. A lot of these brothers and stuff, but that's good. If you can help your family out like that, why not? Why wouldn't you do it? You know? It is. It is what it is. Even if you get there, you got to perform. And most of the times you got to perform. And that's the only thing that's, that's kind of weird where everybody's like, well, you know, Steph, Steph, I mean, Steph Curry got his brother over there. Well, Steph Curry is better than his little brother. Now you talking about Jello. See, on this move right here, Jello is better than Mello. And don't, don't, that, wow, LeVar, no, you crazy, man, okay. There's a pecking order. When the father knows who's the best, 
Lonzo got to be the best. The second best got to be Jello. And it's got to be Melo got to be last. But as time goes on, as he gets his adult body, he's 21, 22 years old. Now he's strong enough to deal with Jello. Jello's strong enough to deal with Lonzo. They're grown men now. So I don't know who's the best. But Melo will get the most because look, look what he's doing at 20. He already just on his second, his second year in the league. And, you know, he gets to do more things. But if you let Lonzo loose like that on the Lakers, it's been the same thing. And y'all act like Jello been overseas and doing his thing. But they look at it like, oh, Jello's not that good. Why would Jello not be that good if he coming from this? You think he, I'm training these dudes. He like, you know what, Dad? I'm going to take the day off. I don't think I'm going to pass the ball like that. Jello can pass like that, but I never told him to pass like that. I put him at point guard one time. That boy could play the point. easy as I don't know what. Same vision. But I, I like him to score. Score that ball. Melo, switch up, score, and, and facilitate. Lonzo, you got to run the team all the time, man. I don't, you score. I don't care if you score 30, 40, or 10. Just make sure we win, son. And that's his mentality, Ben. Everybody's like this about Lonzo. Oh, he gets better every year. All my boys get better every year. But they got the same game. Only thing changing in Lonzo's thing, you think his game is changing? No. It's only one thing that's changing all the time. The goddamn coach. <laughs> The coach keep changing. And whoever believes in Lonzo say, here the keys, son, do what you do. And this is what the boy Billy, yeah, Lonzo call it Billy. I like it. Billy. See, Billy, I said, I like Billy, man. Billy doing his thing. But Billy had a winning, he won. He won uh, coaching Florida. in, 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 in uh, what do you do, Florida? Yeah, Florida. You got to have a championship mentality somewhere. These other coaches, where, where did they run? <laughs> so their mindset won't allow them to, to, to coach Zoe, because their mindset is it's not winning. It's, it's like, just like James Rado, he got to get it. Hey, let that young boy loose. He should let him loose last year. But now he's trying to get it like, oh, if I let him do this, you're going to take the good with the bad. He's going to do some bad things, but he's going to do a lot more good than bad. So now look at it. Everybody got their eyes on, oh, I love coaching this kid. I know you did, but you had him last year. You didn't say you love coaching. So now, hey, get, move some stuff out of the way. Let him do what he do. And now you wonder, oh, I love it. He brings me life. I know he does. Bring a lot of people life. But if you do not treat that life right, you will be fired. Because everybody that's been holding <laughs> my boy has been fired. I'm just trying to tell you. Where's the dude at in uh, Australia now? I think he got fired. Where's the Lithuania coach? Fired. All right. Where's Stan Van Gundy fired? Where's Alvin Gentry fired? Where's Lou Walton fired? Uh, you don't want to be fired? You better learn how to work with them ball boys and do the right thing. It is what it is. <laughs> how do you feel about the uh, the Marvel the Marvel uh, movie trailer with all three of your sons, or the commercial? I'm sorry. Oh no, commercial! It's fine. Sorry. Hey, like I said, what at the end of the day, what are we in? Entertainment. Don't get in your feelings. It's just entertainment. If I know what I'm about, I know what the boys is about. Ain't no commercial that going to be like, man, what, why, why you let them do that commercial, man? It was the, what? It's a commercial. <laughs> look at it. It's a commercial. But hey, but look at the game. Who else can you put in that, that, that commercial? Look at that. Jello ain't even league, but you can't leave him out because I have three boys. So that's going to make it even bigger. You tried it with Mello and uh, Zoe. You're like, damn, look at the buzz on this. Imagine if we put that other one in here. Yes. The ball boys are the face of the league. Why? Because they're known all around the world. They're not just local. They're global. And my boys are the only ones you can kind of back because they are from here. They're the only ones from here. Think about it. Yeah. Luca, you're not from here. You good, but you ain't from here. Joker, you MVP. You ain't from here. MVP, Giannis, you Greece, are you Greece, number one. But Cali, USA, who you got? Not one, not two, but three triple Bs, the ball boys. Tell me who's going to run the league like I told them before. I said, hey, my boys are going to be the face of the NBA. You act like this is something that I've just thought of. The proof is in the pudding. When my boys played high school ball, who was the face of high school? My three boys. Chino, Chino Hills. Hills ain't never been talked about like that. Never will be again. <laughs> we ran high school. 
Lonzo, I sent one of my boys to college just to let him see. Look at UCLA, wasn't nothing until you got back there. As soon as he left, right back down to zero. <laughs> I'm just telling you, you'll never have that buzz again. Now, Melo, send him. I show him I can send him overseas too. Place he ain't never been. Australia, we love Melo. We're the biggest thing out here. I know he is. <laughs> so you don't think we all can go to the NBA and be the biggest in the NBA? It's proof of concept. Everywhere they go, they the biggest. So you think they ain't gonna run the league, the NBA? Stop. That's what they what do you think I made them for? Their last <laughs> name is Ball. I made three of them to make sure it happens. To let them know this is the real deal. But when all three of them get on the same team, ain't nothing you can do about it. It's gonna win championship after championship after championship. Post me I just wanna play with them. I just wanna play with them. Man. But I tell you, hey, that's a little scoop. See, I got. If you want to win, if Charlotte want to win, they got to trade a couple of players, and I'm going to tell them what to go do. Go get Jackson Hayes, because he ain't doing nothing in New Orleans, and I guarantee you Melo make him cold as hell. And you're missing that piece, the dude who can run and block shots. You're missing him. He over there in New Orleans, just sitting there. <laughs> Somebody go get him, because he cold. Lonzo had him playing on a whole nother level. Yeah. yeah. See what happened when Lonzo left? Everything dropped out. Kaboom. <laughs> Charlotte, I mean, Chicago had their team last year, too. What did they do? Nothing. But you bring my son, now you're winning. Yeah. You bring my son in there, it changed a lot of things. You let him go, you fall down. You get him, you go up. Here's what it is. So they just got to realize on how to use them ball boys. And I do trying to tell them, I don't try to bully them and let, let them know. These are things that I know on the fact that I've coached them. The big ballers, AU team wasn't nothing, but my boys make it something where everybody got to watch us. Chino Hills, there ain't no basketball school. We make it a basketball phenom my boys is here. Now they have nothing. <laughs> so, so it's saying, you get them boys the keys of what they do, they win championships. That's what they made for. Because I never put them in that position where it's like, you know what? You guys got to get us out of Chino Hills. So I need you guys to make some money. So that's what happens. You put all this pressure on these 18, 19 year old boys that come from nothing, and you tell them, hey, we need you to make some money so you can get the whole family up out of poverty. Mm. My boys, they ain't played for the money. They play for the love of the game and winning. Like I told them, you gotta, I created some monsters. And when you create a monster, you know what you gotta do? You gotta feed him. And I feed my boy them W's, and I was very hungry. When you do a lot of starving, when you ain't winning in the beginning of your goddamn career, he hungry. He finna go get all them W's. Mellow the same way. I can't wait to go see my boy Jello play this weekend. Ooh! They're gonna be like, oh, Jello's cold. I know. <laughs> that, that's what they did in the summer league. Score that ball. That's what they did in the summer league. Man, it, and that was just spot playing him and people being jealous of little bitty stuff. That was little stuff. I wouldn't have, let him play and do what he do. <sighs> Boys, is something else. I'm telling you. And, and I, anytime, anytime you, you you want somebody to do good, you can have all the talent in the world. But if you don't have no coach believing you, and they got different you know agendas and all that stuff, you ain't gonna get the best out of my boys. Seven game series. You already kind of alluded to this earlier in the interview, but Chicago versus Char uh, Charlotte. Who wins and how many games? Well, I don't know how many games, but shit, Charlotte can't beat Chicago. Mm. Might win a game here or there, but Lonzo, the big brother, he ain't gonna let it happen. <laughs> He's not gonna let it happen. I don't care what Melo's, he ain't gonna, he, he'll get in Melo's head or something, but he, he won't let it happen. But Melo will, Melo, Melo will be out there shining and do what he do, but he, he not gonna win. Even even if Jello is called up by that point, he's on the roster permanently. <laughs> oh, shoot. Now I have to go back to my other thing. You, you <laughs> asked me the other way. Now, you see, when you throw Jello in there, now Lonzo gonna lose. Two balls are better than one. Mm. I just hate to tell you that. When both of them team up on Zoe, it's okay beat them. One on one, Zoe can beat all of them. But whoever Jello goes to automatically wins. And, you know, of course, all the viewers always want to know every time you get asked, they want to know how's, uh, how's Tina doing? What was the update on Man, Tina? Man, Tina doing good. As you can tell, she came in here and tried to dish her <laughs> and push her to the side. <laughs> Man. <laughs> But see, I, 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 matter of fact, man, I'm, I'm going to do something better. Come here, Tina. Come on over here. I'm going to give you two minutes for this, man. Two minutes. And, and just ask her anything. That way you ain't got to ask me. And this is going to make her feel really good. I'm going to tell you. 
I I'm got you. Tina, Tina, come on over here so he can ask you some questions. Now she's trying that. to perform. She's not even using her cane walking over here now. <laughs> now what? Ask Tina some questions and then watch her go crazy. Yeah, <laughs> you get an early morning interview. Now I'm going to get out the way just for a couple of minutes and I'll be right back. Hi. Okay. <laughs> hey, good morning, Tina. How are you doing today? I'm oh, fine. With it, Mello is the biggest thing in, in the league right now. He's a big, yes. how, how does that make you yeah. feel when you see your boys, uh, you know, just being the biggest story? Yeah, I like it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What, what, what are some um, parenting tips that, that, that you have for anybody, you know, who, who sees kind of how, how loving that, that you've always been to your kids and, yeah. you know, see when, when they Thanks. grow up, the first person they think, Lamelo at the SP, she says, shout out to my mama, shout out to my mama. You know, uh, what, okay. what are some tips that, that you would give other parents, uh, you know, for raising children? I don't know, but be, 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 all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how does how does the love feel, you know, when, um, like good, I said. Good, all I, right. I was, I was about to say, I was about to say, every interview with, with LeVar is, you know, they're asking about you and, you know, all the fans, they're asking about you and stuff. Uh, just just yeah. how has the support been Thanks. these past couple of years from uh, from all the fans? Yeah, uh, fine. Yeah. Heart. <laughs> I heard that. I heard that. Yeah. I heard that. And yeah. and now, you know, Jello is like this close. It's like he's. Yes, he's okay. A couple of years of him getting to the. And then we, we saw a glimpse of it in the summer league. Now he's finally yeah. this close. But yeah. how excited are you for Jello? And, um, you, you know, okay. what do you think he can do? Limits. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, uh, talk uh frustrating but uh oh well <laughs> oh it's all right it's all right it's all, right. all good it's all good right, Tina, you got to go all right man i'm glad you got to do that right. no, no i appreciate i appreciate it so much tina thank you all right thank you the man the internet's gonna eat that up <laughs> trying to tell you the internet's gonna eat that up you already know man they, they love tina they love tina but yeah oh, yeah uh, go, go ahead. Is there anything else, uh, um, you know, to be looking no, out for? I know there's good, a, the luxury line with the candles and, and the spa stuff. And man, like I told him, I'm doing a little bit of everything. And it's going to be awesome. Like I said, I'm the only one that can that can do shoes, candles, hot sauce, water, rims, ties. I'm all over the place. But it, I can. That's why. That's what having your own brand. You can do whatever you want. And the fact that it's, you know, independent and privately owned, I can make a decision to do anything. Because like I said, these other companies, Nike can't make no water. Gatorade can't make no clothes. You know, these shoe brands, man, you can't, uh, Adidas can't make no luxury brand. A luxury brand ain't really making no basketball shoes. I'm the only one doing both of them. And people don't even, they, 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 they talk so much, they'd be like, man, do you realize this dude just made a luxury shoe and a performance shoe? And people buy both of them. So it is what it is, you know. Don't don't be putting a limit on what I can do. So it's gonna it's gonna be a joy doing this, man. Like I said, at the end of the day, I, I want to be the biggest brand ever. And folks chuckle and be like, "Oh, but we got McDonald's, we got Nike." I'm just getting started. It's about to be amazing what we about to do. If folks about to catch on, be like, "God dang, what 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 is he not doing?" Like I said, I got a, got a guy who making a luxury shoe and come out with some shampoo and shower gel. <laughs> Come on, man! You got to be clean all the way around. Yeah, and where, where can people buy this? It's all on the. Uh... You can go on uh, bigballerbranding.com and, and and get whatever you want from there. All whatever right, whatever you well, want, whatever we got, you always can go to that that site right there and, and get whatever you want, man. But like I said, it's going to be a nice holiday gift when folks get that that sham, uh, that hand wash and that shower gel. That stuff is organic and it smells great. I'm telling you. When folks get it, they're gonna be like, "Oh God, dang! How far come up on this?" <laughs> we had the stuff made in Switzerland. It's, it's, wow. it's some good soap stuff, but yeah, man. But I, what I found out is, man, hey, going overseas, it's a lot of stuff over there. You ain't just got to make money in in the U.S. It's a lot you, of different you got, places. You guys over have there. a shop over there in Europe, right? I have, yes, I have a warehouse in uh in um, Europe too, and it's called Big Bowler Brand International. So I have anything in Europe over there, so I got two warehouses: one over here and one over there. Where, where is it in Europe? If you don't mind. Say again. It's where, like where in Estonia. Is the Estonia. Estonia. Okay. Okay. Estonia. Yeah, yeah. Estonia. Wow. Wow. Estonia, Lithuania. Is, yeah. I got still got my ties over there, so I'm good as far as shipping and, and getting stuff out to people. 
over there on the European side. So we, we got both of them. Well, LeVar, Mr. Big Baller himself, I appreciate the time so much. Hey, and man. Tina, thank you as well. Um, we, we appreciate y'all and, and everything. Oh, what'd she say? What'd she say? Tina said, yeah, no problem. Again. Oh, my God, shoot. <laughs> Oh. Uh, we, we appreciate everything that, that you guys are doing, um, you know, just for inspiring everybody and stuff like that. And uh, until All next right. time, you guys have a great time. All right. Take care, man. Appreciate it. All right. Be safe. All right.